VC, let's do this again. I'm going to go through a new pile of records from various genres. Pretty, pretty good eclectic mix here. I have uh, a couple of piles to get to uh, that I've been getting, um, that I've been listening to quite a bit. I've been revisiting some records from last year. Um, being that I haven't been buying very much, I'm sort of getting a chance to go back to some things and, and yes, play some records for the first time. Um, yeah, still um, mostly, I did buy a few big pieces lately, but uh, I kind of spent some of my WFMU budget a little early, but for the most part, I've been laying off and putting stuff aside for that aforementioned record fair coming up. This was a new release I pre-ordered, Habitat 2 by J. Forrester and N. Kramer, J and N. Um, I don't know why they're so weird about not using their names, but I fell in love with the last record that was been out for a few years, thanks to a commenter who I still cannot pinpoint who it was. Um, the comment's just gone. I don't know. It's almost as if it never happened. Maybe it was a figment of my imagination. Anyway, this is on the Leaving, Le Leaving Records, who does a lot of this sort of fourth world... Um, ambient, they had done some sort of like hip-hop-ish records, a lot of sampling, um, and this one is kind of in that spirit, um, they talk about what they play, the instrumentation is vibraphone, kalimbula, anklung, log drum, bongos, reco reco, bells, chimes, norns, and the OP1, Talks about techniques, live recording, sampling, resampling, script based sample, cutting, and analog tape bouncing. Composition no grid, asynchronous loops driven by textures, phasing tempo, and pitch manipulation. Very lovely. And yes, the crickets are out again. I have the window open. I'm gonna take advantage of that every time I can. Inner sleeve. So this is nice. There they are. J and N just came out you can find this I don't think many people are talking this one up should be able to find this one no problem let's get into some other records and not preamble too much um, new band within the last few years I'm certainly not the first to this one but this band sweeping promises this is an excellent rock band sort of uh, and the post-punk, they sort of are deceptively simple. They kind of make their instruments, um, it makes, they may, almost seems like on the first surface, like they, they're just very basic, but they know how to make their songs just sound just right. This first one, Hunger for a Way Out, and that track, the first track, is a scorcher, is so good. The guitar sound is this one guitar chord that, um, it's, be, it's mainly a duo, but they have a drummer, Lyra and Caulfield. Lyra, she's the bass player, Caulfield's the guitarist. This one chord that he plays, it's just so... He just adds these um, sort of ninth... I think maybe it sounds like he's just adding some you know extra notes in the chord that just give it this really perfect sound. But the whole record's good. It's super short. Uh, this was recorded in Fall of 19, released in the spring... Of, released in 2020. This has been repressed many times. And this is the first album. Um, I think they signed to Sub Pop for the next record, I think. And uh, this has been repressed, like I said, many times. And it's just the whole thing, front to back, is a scorcher. And it just, it cooks. Hunger for a Way Out by Sweeping Promises. And I'd love to see this band live. This is just a good band. And like I said, it sounds simple, but I think they just they just know how to make this what they do sound right and full. And they recorded this whole thing. It says, recorded quickly in an unoccupied concrete laboratory, predominantly with our single mic technique. Interesting. This is not an audio file record. And this came out this year. Their next album. I got both. Good Living is coming for you. This one maybe not is not at the same level as Hunger for a Way Out. But I do dig this. This is this is good. It, a little more rubbery, a little more synthy. Um, good though, I, I, and I like this sleeve design. These are both black vinyl copies. Who gives a shit? It's good. They, well, both of these records are on the feel it, but I did do a sub pop single or something. 
Um, this one also, I think, recorded super quick. I don't know if it was with the single mic technique, but um, I believe Vinyl Douche has shown this, Mr. Sam. Maybe some others. I, I'm kind of late to the party on this band, but I wanted to spread the word about them. This is excellent. <laughs> Something more experimental. Here's a here's something from the Stunty Files on one of his streams a few weeks ago. This is one I would have totally missed if not for Mr. Stunty. Ben Vita with Yarn Wire and Nina Dante. The beat in my head hit. This is just this this kind of comes from the spirit of like lovely music. I think um, sort of spoken word over just a strangeness. I will call it. Yeah, like, you know, just sort of simple backing musicians. Music and text by Ben Vita, recorded in 2021 in New York City. Performed by Laura Barger, Nina Dante, Russell Greenberg, and Ben Vita. Ben Vita's been around doing experimental music for quite a bit, but just this, yeah, I find this just transfixing. Really cool. It's on the shelter label. And it's a new release, you can probably find this easily. It's mainly driven by these sort of whispered, almost like lullaby-esque vocal, well, uh, you know, prose. And the cover, it was almost, it's just really just, just got all the text right there. This, this is just, this is one of these that sort of catches you and stops you in your tracks, but you gotta be patient with it and wait for it. Um, yeah, this is, this could have been on the lovely music label in the early 80s really interesting and um just just caught me off guard really here's a repress of the first bowery electric album now repackaged with the drop ep on you guessed it cranky this band kind of coming out of the shoegaze element i'd say a little more sort of on the dub side of things i've been waiting for them to repress these i they repressed uh, the second album, and the only album I'd really been familiar with was the one on 40, 4AD or Beggar's Banquet, the third one, that was when I actually was worked, was working, I was a music director in college radio and I remember that coming out and I remember getting that and I, th I thought it was cool, it was definitely sort of post trip hop, but um, this one definitely is repetitive, sort of droney, post shoe certainly in the Le Bradford mold. Excellent. Really great pressing too. Lawrence Chandler, Martha Schwen Schwendener, Michael John Michael Jongren, and John Dale. Guitar, bass, drums mainly. But recorded in Hartford, this is a New York City band actually. Maybe I'll find more New York stuff and uh, maybe I'll find more of their records in New York. But from ninety four recorded or remastered by Mr. Bob Weston, Chicago Mastering Service, so that's good. Um, hopefully, that's the second album is Beat. Hopefully Beat we see, or I see again. I think did repress it in 2016, I missed it. Good band if you don't know, Bowery, Bowery Electric. Electric. Peter Jeff Jeffries, pianist, coming out of the New Zealand experimental scene. I love his record, uh, last, last, Dull Child in a Small World. I can't forget, I just forgot it off the top of my head, but he also has the Electricity Record. Good, he's a, p a piano player, but doing it kind of in a Nick Cave mold, you could say. This is a very rare album, actually. Only 150 of these. And this is a case of something that had been on my want list since it came out. It was, a, it was released alongside a reissue of one of his albums that I have. And they put this out there alongside with it, and I just missed it. And I've been waiting for it to come about since. And it's just Odds and Ends by Peter Jeffries, recorded from 93 to 2017. You have a Sebado cover on here. You have a Nick Cave cover on here. I nailed it. Tupelo. He's doing Tupelo on here. And then there were others, or just other sort of rare tracks by Peter Jeffries. 
number 141 out of 150. It finally came up for sale on Discogs, and not for too much. Oh, I like this kind of sticker, just kind of attached to the generic sleeve, actually. But live scraps, rehearsals, and outtakes. Um, I highly recommend Peter Jeffries. He's definitely experimental. You might say, I don't want to say pop, but he's he's coming about the New Zealand Nick Cave, you could say. Not quite as sort of bombastic as his earlier stuff, but he's got he mines that same territory of dark piano and experimentation. I, I mean, this is maybe not the record to start with. Uh, the last, the last dull child. I don't have to show it, but um, I, I recommend checking that one out. There are reissues of that. But this is cool. I was super happy to find this. On the Grapefruit label. The store and label. Alright, another couple from the Stunty Files. Um, SIF. S-Y-P-H. This was a band I maybe heard of, but really not, not so much. Post-Punk. I have two records. I bought two records because I was so enraptured by him. This one is a later one. This is self-titled, yeah. Or no, it's it's a Heart Slows. German band. Kind of a minimal post-punk band, you, you could say. Um, I think from 85. Also, these were in the US, so it was cool to find them. Oh no, this one's from 82. Recorded in Hamburg. And um, very interesting. Um, maybe a kind of later wire thing happening. Um, German group. I guess they were more of a traditional punk group and SYPH or SIF is a, a term well you Germans can tell me but I guess it, it alludes to something maybe not appropriate. Uh, this is the, their own labels. I think there are reissues of these. So this is this one to be honest with you I need more time with. This one was a little more abstract. This is the one I enjoyed the most. This one here um, is, maybe this is the self-titled one, I forget the titles, but this has Holger Shukai on it, and it does have his spirits there. This one is so, this one's great. I don't wanna say so fucking good, but I'm saying it again. It is so fucking good. You can see your Holger Shukai bass and percussion and horn. Um, I believe this comes after the one I just showed, but, this track here, I think it's um, the second track, or... Anyway, this one totally knocked me out. Sif. There's a reissue of this one. I know I saw a reissue of this one. This wasn't very much, though. I think it was around $35, $40 with a U.S. seller, so not bad. Um, I want to get the first album, probably, but I, I got to... I need to listen to these some more. This is, this is a lesson, the takeaway here. I'm trying to <laughs> listen to these records I'm excited about more than once. Hopefully two or three times. Sif. Thank you, Stunty. Was going to sell in my s live stream, but I decided not to. The only one I pulled back, and it's this record, um, out of Ghana? Oh, no. This is an African record. Republic of Guinea. Bambaya Jazz National, an African jazz record. This is not sort of, you know, going to be too weird. Anyone looking to get into sort of African jazz that has a more pleasing effect to it, I found this one just, just really brightened my day, we'll say. Um, this, is, uh, this is a French pressing. I think, it's, I think it's just French language, you know, but New Guinea or Guinea. Um, Bombay Jazz National Regard sur la Paz. Look at the past, I guess it would be Regard sur la Paz. Regard sur la Paz. Sweet. And yeah, it's mainly two side long tracks. This is a, but again, this is a nice, relaxing African jazz record. Happy to not have sold it. It's actually not even very expensive, so that was kind of part of it. It was like, eh, $15, $20 album. Nice, I don't know if anyone's ever seen this. This happened to be an Angry Mom years ago. I bought this in Angry Mom. This one was also from Angry Mom. One I've seen a bunch, but never bought. Um, just because I saw it a lot, but it's a local artist. Chris Swanson, Pulaski Skyway. 
a private press on the Badger Records label, which is a label based about 15 minutes away from here in Trumansburg. Only a few records on this. There is another one on the label that is at Angry Mom now on the wall. Um, but this was not a wall record. Bob Moog, one Robert A. Moog doing the sort of testimonial on the back, who spent time here, if you didn't know, in, in the Trumansburg area. So this is a private press. Personnel, all sounds on this record are made by the Moog synth as played and programmed by Chris Swanson. This one's a little more playful, um, not quite as experimental and strange, um, a little more appealing. Um, yeah, um, he talks here about he's arranged and performed with Stan Kenton, Maynard Ferguson, Gary Burton. Chris headed the New York Improv Improvisation Ensemble for six years before turning to the electronic music medium. In 68, he was anointed composer in the residence at the Moog Studio. So, Moog Association. And we have a long track with Pulaski Skywine, side one, and then, um, five tracks inside too cool cool stuff I, don't, I wouldn't say I would call this like essential early electronica or electronic Moog electronic but it's um, some you know and the associations with Moog alone are a cool piece to have here again it's sort of um, less out there and abstract a little more sort of playful a little more like um, um, Doug Leedy Remind me of Doug Leedy a lot. I gotta give you the year if I can. It's I think it's from 68-69. So there you go. This next one, bit of a departure from the last one here. And I'm taking a break from my radio show. Um, about a month break. It's a long story, but um, for the last show I did, we did a fundraiser and I decided to go a little bit outside the box. And I spent an hour. I wanted to play the whole thing, but I only did an hour. I played, what, two or three sides of this Kaiji Haino record that was being discussed, I think, last year mostly. Um, the title, let's say one time. I said it on the radio a few times, but I just played the sides straight through. My Lord Music, I most humbly beg your indulgence in the hope that you will do me the honor of permitting this seed called Kaiji Haino. To be planted within you. Kaiji on the hurdy gurdy. The, the, you know, sometimes he's in France, Greek, uh, Greece. Almost like a violin, but has a crank. It's a violin shaped instrument. And um, he creates just a kind of devastating world with this. It's, it's super cool. Super interesting. And <laughs> I've been meaning to play it on the radio. I was like, how am I ever going to play this? And I decided for my fundraiser the WRFI fundraiser that we did. I'm gonna treat the public to three sides of Kaiji Haino. Solo on Hurdy Gurdy. Unbelievably, this has gone up incredibly in value. Um, I got one of the last copies that was available through our distributor at Angry Mom. Um, and uh, I just happened to sort of um, be in the right place, right time to grab it and took it home. And it was at cost, so that's nice. Kaiji Haino on black editions. Um, so you can stream this one if anyone is interested. And next we're gonna hear this Sandy Bull. Live in San Francisco, 1969. A bit of a bootleg here, but um, did I have the... No, I thought I had I thought I had some notes on this. It's on the Trading Places label, if, if anyone's checking, but um, there's very little of Sandy playing live, so I'm pretty much a Sandy Bull completist. And uh, he's, here he is doing a few of his tracks that you may know. Check him out. It's, you know, if you don't know Sandy Bull, he was on Vanguard mainly, and he lived with uh, Hamza Al Din in San Francisco. They were roommates apparently, but he was known to, for playing the oud, electric guitar, very stringed instruments. The oud is sort of the big one he's known for. So it's a nice little Sandy Bull uh, live album. Yeah, yeah, I wish he got more acclaim. Is it interesting, not a documentary, sort of a little feature on him where he was like him in his last years and he looks terrifying. 
like he's been through some stuff. Anyway, we're gonna listen to some of that. All right, feeling pretty, feeling pretty uh, ready for bed. I think. I listened to this tonight. This alto sax title by Charlie Parker. Pulled this out of a jazz collection that was given to me many years ago. I've discussed that. This is a nice. No, the sleeve is not looking very good. You can see this, but the record is pretty nice. I wouldn't call it completely clean, but it's on that UK Columbia uh, mono. Um, this one I do really want to know the year, but I don't have it in front of me. I won't say too much about it, but I just sometimes need a palate cleanser, and I'm I was going through the selection of. The jazz records from that collection I haven't played yet. I'm like, I haven't played this Charlie Parker. So I cleaned it and dropped it. Sounds really nice. Mono, UK, pressing, alto sax, Charlie Parker, Benny Carter, Johnny Hodges, Willie Smith. All right, here's one that's been discussed and everyone universally is saying how great this sounds and how well done it is. And I could not agree more with the Indian Navigation title, The Pharaoh, Pharaoh Sanders, reissued by Luakabop. Um, with a second LP of two performances of Harvest Time, which it, it's there in, in sort of a vague sound. You can kind of hear that it's that strong, but it sounds like a completely different piece, which is great. And that one, you have a different sort of... Yeah, you do have a different um, lineup than what you do on the album. And the album is just beautifully done, uh, remastered. It is just... Yeah, this one really hit the spot. Harvest Time, of course, is just such a seminal track. I would love to have an original, but I don't think I really care anymore. This sounds so amazing. Great spine. And yeah, it includes lots of great additions that just, you know, the photos really are the coolest part. You know, there's like a ticket stub, there's all kinds of stuff. An old poster, reproduction, this awesome picture of Pharaoh and most interestingly you can see the music the chart for um, Harvest Time which is really just a vamp of C minor 7 and F minor 7 that is the sort of why this is a modal track August 1st 1976 so you can play along it's very simple but super spiritual and incredibly deep record and deep sound and I do like Pharaoh's vocals, I don't mind them at all. The book looks great. I don't know how long he's going to be around, how many they made, but there's a great one of those last interviews in here too. I I could not recommend this more. It's, it's around $50 for the box, but what you get in here, and considering the originals are six, seven, eight hundred bucks, and the other, other pressings are bootlegs, I think this is a no-brainer. So. This one gets certainly a high recommendation for me. The Pharaoh Box. Grab it. Posted recently. Uh, Hannibal Marvin Peterson, the Sunrise Orchestra. What a great orchestrated free jazz record and sort of avant garde jazz record. Um, the personnel is here on the insert, which it does come, come with this. Now, this was part of a larger order or a three piece order I did, which I'll talk more about another time. but. Uh, mainly Billy Hart, Richard Davis, Lawrence Killian, um, and a lot of other players I don't know, but you do have lots of different orchestration, a little bit of vocals. Trumpeter, Hannibal Martin, Martin Peterson, he had a pretty rare custom record in 69 that seemed like it was more of a jazz funk album. And then this one, um, with just the right hints of orchestration and weirdness, but then sort of a little bit of bombast too. Um, I just love the I love the approach on this one from 1974 on the Sunrise label. This was reissued by the Universal Sound or Soul Jazz label. This is the original pressing, which the record is super clean and the sleeve, you know, you can see has some some water damage, but I don't mind it. And it was an amazing price. So I was very happy to get it, and what a great... I mean, the cover still presents so well. I don't tend to go for a lot of orchestration in jazz music, but it's got to be tastefully done, and this certainly is. I This record's a 
mind blowing. It really is super. Really enjoyed it. There's the, the uh, original labels there. So that's a cool one, Hannibal. So what it was, Children of the Sun, Children of the Fire. That is um, by Hannibal and the Sunrise Orchestra. Here's a long way to reissue. This is the Bikita Carol Orange Fish Tears with members of the Black Artist Group in France, originally a Palm Records label. I have a few of us got this um, limited edition wraparound. It's one of 175, but then inside you just do have the, it's kind of like a little, little fold around jacket, and then inside you just have the reproduction of the sleeve. This one, you know, I previewed, of course, because I've I had been looking for the original, not really expecting to find it, but um, it's not quite as demanding as people might think. I think, you know, it, it has what Oliver Lake, uh, Nana Vasconcelos, and Manuel Villarreal on the pianos, but a lot of great percussion and great sort of. Um, yeah, I like the, I like those jazz records, those avant jazz records where they there's a lot of sort of restraint used and like you know I think of the Fabio du Damoy and all the you know the Sun percussion records like just there's a spirit of that to these to this too. Yes, yeah, so yeah, I'll just pull that out. But um, great to have the Super Continue reissue who's been doing a lot of the French jazz records. Um, this one is produced by Jeff Gilson as well, as well originally, and um, couldn't be happier with it. This is uh, in the 175 they did pressing on clear vinyl. Re really strong. I mean, um, a, just a good thinking, just a good record to sort of think on. I found. Uh, I like trying to sort of feel like what mood I'm in as I listen to these things, but um, very striking. Um, definitely worth finding. Yeah, this this is uh, Bikita Carol with the Black Artist Group out of Saint Saint Louis, Saint Louis, sort of a brother um, offshoot, you could say, of the AACM. Originally from 1970, Orange Fish Tears. Bikita Carol did not have a huge recording career. Um, I'm looking for, and I have in my want list some of the other ones that he was a part of and we'll see we'll see if I come across them so that's the Bikita Carol here's a cheap one a cheap reissue this one that I did not expect to love as much as I did Roswell Rudd everywhere this was a, this was great Roswell Rudd the trombone this was like a mid 70s pressing it was, it was, it was like three dollars in Angry Mom so I took it home because <laughs> this does it a little damage here but it's okay it's on this impulse label it originally came out on the Trident, it's from 67. But here's who you got. You got ESP people on here. Giuseppe Logan, flute and bass clarinet. Charlie Hayden, Louis Worrell, Beaver Harris, and Ken, uh, Robin Kenyatta. This one, it was so good. I highly recommend you all find this one, whether you get the, the same pressing or the first pressing. It's not too expensive. It is a free jazz record. It blazes at times, but it... Um, I found it listenable. I found it... Um, almost psychedelic you might say I love what I love this one so much Roswell Rudd everywhere I don't have any other Roswell Rudd records I don't have a ton of trombone records but um, I will be looking for more and the last one this is a new release if you've talked about this one Celestial by Noel Scott with Marshall Allen uh, this was recorded in Harlem Netherlands as it says here one take, live direct tape using the RTM SM900 and cut using a mono Scully 601 cutting lathe. And this is Noel Scott who was in one of the last incarnations of the Sun Ra Orchestra with Marshall Allen. Uh, you know, age, what, he was 99 I think it says here. This one, it has some, you know, they're working with I think some English uh, musicians as well as Chris Henderson. Um, here, who I think also spent some time with Sonora. But these guys, Charlie Stacy and uh, Mikhail Montoli, they really do an, um, a fine job backing him up. And Marshall Allen is playing EWI 
which sounds like a crazy synth, and it blew my mind. It's at the end of the Celestial track. Um, he created this, apparently, the Electronic Wind Instrument, EWI. It, this thing was really good. I mean, at times it's a little, um, I wouldn't say straight, but not avant-garde, really, but it definitely gets there. With Marshall Allen sounding awesome on here. I, uh, I uh, couldn't be happy with this one. This is one I was going to sell. I bought to sell and I decided to keep. There they are. This is recorded in 2021. Nice pressing. Yeah. Mono, too. That's going to do it. Ended up being a pretty long one. Hope everyone's great. Um, I've got a bunch of more videos I'm going to put in the hopper. And uh, maybe some more selling. I'm probably just doing selling on my own. You know, not via live stream or anything. But um, I'm trying to keep up with all these live streams. <laughs> There's quite a few of them. Um, we'll see. Once we're down in uh, New York for FMU for three or four days. Um, hopefully we'll do some videos down there and definitely take some footage. We'll see what we do, but hope you enjoyed all these. Um, hope I gave good info, and not just sort of my musing. Anyway, um, I'll talk to you on the next one. See ya.